when a Muslim tells me, how can God be tempted? My first question is, what do you mean? Tempted in what way? Tempted in what way? Are you telling me that if Jesus is God, he cannot be tempted in the sense that there would be nothing within him that would cause him to entertain and perhaps succumb to those temptations? Is that what you mean? Yeah, you're right. Jesus wasn't tempted that way. But if you mean that Jesus, if he's God, cannot have people challenging him, defying him, and tempting him, that's a lie because people do that all day, all night to God, even Muslims. Everyone is tempting God day in and day out. When you oppose God, when you defy God, when you challenge God and question God, you're tempting him. That's so, external. So tempting doesn't mean in the, the modern sense of the term tempting. Even in the modern but, sense, if a, are you, do you, and I say this not to make fun, do you mm -hmm. struggle with homosexuality? Uh, I do not know. Okay, so if a gay guy starts trying to hit on you, will you be tempted to succumb and have sex with him? Uh, no, I would not. But he's tempting you, right? Uh, I, su I suppose. He's trying to tempt you to have sex with him, but you're repulsed by it, right? Yes. Exactly. But so that's what we call an external temptation. A temptation from the outside that has no effect on you because there's nothing within you that even caused you to succumb to it, right? Right. Okay, but what if a gorgeous, drop-dead, beautiful female that comes and hits on you not only is that an external temptation now within you you're going to now struggle with that desire and you may succumb he tempted you but there was nothing tempting about his temptation but when that drop that gorgeous kim kardashian look-alike starts tempting you that will be quite tempting right yes okay now what's my point the bible says God has been tempted. God as God has been tempted. Not just Jesus, who is man. But there was nothing tempting that would make God succumb to the temptation. So the Muslims don't know what they're talking about. And do you want me to prove it to you? Do you want me to read the Bible or are you going to read it for me? Uh, I can get it up. Um, but you got to look at the King James. Uh, I've only got the Dewey Reigns. Well, that's, that's good enough because it's okay. Elizabethan English because I needed something Elizabethan. Now here. Guys, let me show you. The Bible says God as God has been tempted. But there's nothing within God that would cause him to even entertain and succumb to those temptations. So yes, Jesus was tempted because he's God and man. But because he's God who is man, he's impeccable. So no matter how much they try to tempt him, there was nothing within him that would cause him to succumb. Let me prove it to you. Go to Deuteronomy. Well, start with Numbers 14.22. Fourteen twenty-two. Okay. Uh, and yet all the men who have seen my majesty louder, and, louder. and the and the signs that I have wrought in Egypt and in the wilderness, and who have tested me ten times already, and yet have not obeyed my voice. The word tested is the same word for tempted. That's why in the King James it says they have tempted me these ten times already. Hmm. Okay. That's the same word, by the way, in Hebrew. Test and tempt. So here, it's they translate test, but it can also be tempted. So how many times they tempted God? Ten times. But that's in the wilderness. Right. So God himself was tempted in the wilderness, huh? That's what it says. Yep. Now go to Deuteronomy 6, 16. And this is what Jesus quotes against Satan, by the way. Deuteronomy 6, 16. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in the place of temptation. Wow, I'm confused. So they tempted God in the place of temptation? That's what it says. Even though you're not supposed to tempt God, right? That's correct. And Jesus quotes the first part of that against Satan. Away from me, Satan. For as written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And yet here it says, you should not tempt the Lord God as you already tempted him. In the, in the temptation. But wait, I thought God cannot be tempted. Yeah, he cannot be. But it says he's tempted because it has two different senses and two different meanings, right? Right. Now go to Psalm 106, verse 14. Psalm 106, 106 verse Now I forgot. You're Dewey Rames, right? I am, yeah. Dewey Rames may be Psalm 105, 14 because uh, the, the numbering of the Psalms is different. 
I think it's 106. It says, but lusted exceedingly in yeah, the yeah, wilderness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Dura Ames is Psalm 106? Yeah. I'm amazed. Okay, go ahead. Read Psalm 106, 14. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Just like Jesus was tempted in desert, God was tempted in the desert? Right. And yet God wasn't man, and yet he was still tempted, huh? Right. Wow. Okay, now what about the Spirit of the Lord? Has he been tempted? Acts 5, verse 9. Acts, 9, verse 5, Acts 5, verse 9. It says, And Peter said to her, Why have you agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, The word the test is the same word for tempt in Greek. That's why King James says, Why have you agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Finish it. Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they shall carry you out. Okay, you caught it. God is God. God as spirit. God as God by nature, without becoming flesh, has been tempted. But it says you cannot tempt God. But now I'm explain to you what it means. You ready? Go to mm -hmm. James 1, 13 to 15. This is the passage they misquote. James 1. 13 to 15. This is the passage Amos quotes. So say, God can't be tempted, son. Suck okay. up. <laughs> okay. So it says, no one, shall, no one should say when he is tempted that he was tempted by God. For wow. God does not entice toward evils. And I like how they captured it. See, he doesn't because you will be told he tempts people, but he doesn't tempt them to entice them to sin. So this translation did an excellent job. So reread it again, verse 13, so we get the point. Reread mm -hmm. it from 13 again, from the beginning. No one should say when he is tempted that he was tempted by God, for God does not entice toward evils, and he himself tempts no one. Keep going. Yet truly, each one is tempted by his own desires, having been enticed and drawn away. There you away. go. That's the key. There's two kinds of temptations. You see it? Mm-hmm. There is the external, where people test you and tempt you, and internal, where you have desires that can entice you to succumb to temptation. Right. So God cannot be tempted in the internal sense, because God has no desires within him that would entice him to succumb to temptation and sin. That's Jesus. That's why Jesus was impeccable, immutable, and could never sin, no matter how much they tried to tempt him. Mm-hmm. And that's actually proof that Jesus is God. Because right. God, though tempted, there's nothing within him to entice him to succumb. And that's why Jesus never succumbed, because he's one eternal divine person, though truly human. But as a divine person, he's in control of his human nature and emotions and could not succumb to temptation. Right. It was futile. So what's the point? So what's the objection? Yeah, God cannot be tempted depending on what you mean. If you mean that there's nothing within God that would entice him to succumb and sin, amen. But that's absolutely true of Jesus. That's why it was impossible for him to succumb. 